Good afternoon and welcome to Creating Single Line Diagrams in Revit. My name is David Robison, and today we are going to be looking at the single line diagrams in Revit. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. We've got people joining us here. While uh, we're getting everyone uh, connected and waiting for them to join, if you can put in the chat where you're tuning in from, I'd appreciate that. So go to the chat and just let me know where you're located. I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina. Yes. Uh, go to your chat and let everyone know where you are tuning in from. It's also my tech check to make sure that all our audio and everything else is working here. Uh, Heath is joining us from Arkansas. Thank you. So audio is definitely working. Still got more people joining us. Again, my name is David Robison. Today we'll be looking at creating single line diagrams in Revit. So we're getting everyone connected here. Uh, as you're getting connected, just go ahead and type in the chat where you're tuning in from. And we'll wait just a few more moments for everyone else to get connected. Looks like we still got a couple of people joining us, which is great. We've got Zachary out in Salem, Oregon on the other side of the country from me. Tujana in California, Alex out in California. Okay, a bunch of West Coast people. Uh, still morning time for you all. All right, well, we will go ahead and get started because I know that uh, your time is valuable and you don't wanna sit here uh, watching people join the webinar. So we'll get started. Uh, so to start with, I wanted to uh, just give a little background on uh, who I am. So my name is David Robinson, and I am not actually an electrical engineer, but I've been working with electrical engineers for nearly my entire life. Uh, my dad is actually an MEP engineer. He has an engineering firm up in Seattle, Washington, so out on the West Coast with all of you all out there. Uh, and so together in the mid-90s, we actually started writing software together for uh, AutoCAD to automate some of the electrical uh, design he was doing in buildings. Uh, and then in the mid 2000s, we put together some software for Revit. Uh, so in 2001, we started selling our AutoCAD software, then we started doing some Revit software. So we've been doing software for electrical engineers since 2001, we've been selling it. Uh, so a little over 20 years now. Uh, and in that time, uh, Again, I'm not an electrical engineer, but I've actually had the privilege of working with over 600 different electrical engineers at firms of all different sizes, uh, from small one-man shops, uh, design-build contractors, large companies, uh, so just a whole wide range of electrical engineers. Uh, so that's given me an opportunity to look at how lots of different engineers are doing their engineering uh, in a standard you know, career path you might uh, be at a couple different companies if you, if you move change companies once or twice, but you're not gonna be, uh, see 600 different companies uh, over the course of your career. Uh, but I've had the opportunity to work with all of those people and to see what works well and what doesn't. So today I wanna share with you uh, the best practices I've seen for the people who are doing electrical design in Revit, how they're being most effective in Revit and particularly with their single line diagrams. So uh, if you could, are excited for that, could you just go ahead and give me a yes in the chat uh, that you're excited to, to learn about what other people are doing in Revit. And I will start uh, going over what I've seen, again, these other people doing kind of the best practices for doing design uh, and single line diagrams in Revit. So I wanna uh, start with a framework that we have uh, that we call the electrical design triangle. So I'm gonna draw that out here on my screen. The electrical design triangle. And it's got three sides. And so these three sides are gonna inform how we're thinking about our electrical design in Revit. Uh, the first side is the single line diagram. That's you know, our official 
topic of discussion. Uh, so we'll be talking about that a lot. But the single line diagram doesn't exist by itself. It's connected to other pieces. And so you can't just think about the single line diagram uh, in isolation without thinking about these other pieces to, to really be effective. So the other side of the triangle, we've got the calculations. So this is all of your wire sizing, your breaker sizing, voltage drop calculations, uh, short circuit analysis, arc flash if you're doing that. Uh, so all the calculations that you have to do to actually have a, a, a correct uh, electrical design. Uh, so that's the other side of the triangle. And then at the bottom, we have the Revit model itself. So we're talking about doing single line diagrams in Revit. So you have this whole Revit model uh, where you're putting your panels in. Uh, and so that is going to be interacting with your single line diagram as well. So to uh, be most effective with your single line diagram, you need to have all three of these pieces working together. So I'm gonna go over uh, these three pieces and then how, how, the, how we can um, have them interconnected to be effective. Uh, the first part I do wanna talk about is the Revit model. So we're talking about single line diagrams in Revit. So you need to understand how Revit works. Uh, there's a lot to Revit. Uh, there's a couple pieces that I wanna highlight that are important to understand uh, that are just kind of Revit specific and not really electrical design. The first are families. Uh, to be effective doing your electrical design in Revit, you really need to understand how families work, what a family is, how to at least open it up and look at it, how to modify it, how to add parameters to it, because uh, the, the families are the building blocks for your electrical model. So you want to have a good understanding of how families work in Revit. You also want to understand shared parameters in Revit. This is where you can add information to your families, either for changing their geometry and, and having things uh, adjust that way, or just for labeling purposes where you can put a shared parameter on and then you can schedule it or do an annotation. Families and shared parameters, there's nothing electrical about either of those, but they're important uh, Revit topics to understand. So if you're gonna be doing your work in Revit, you really wanna have a good understanding or at least someone on your team who has a good understanding of those so that you can be working with your families, working with your shared parameters to get the documentation that you need. And then in Revit itself, there's a whole host of electrical features that they include. They have panels and transformers uh, that, you know, those are modeled in families as electrical equipment. So you need to know how to create those. You need to understand how to connect them together, how to create the panel schedule, how to put the devices, your receptacles, your light fixtures on your, pan on your uh, model, connect it to your panel schedule so that you have your loads uh, being reflected there. We could probably talk for, for days about just the electrical pieces in Revit. So we're not gonna do that to today because we're not, this isn't just a tutorial on Revit, but just do know that the better you understand how Revit's working, the more effective you're going to be with your single line diagram. So you definitely want to have a good understanding of Revit and just the basic building blocks that Revit gives you for your, your electrical design. The next side of the triangle that I want to take a look at is the single line diagram itself. And for this, I'm going to switch over to Revit. Uh, and so the first question for your single line diagram is where should that single line diagram even live? Uh, there's a couple different places that people try. Uh, you know, the first place that you probably were working with your single line diagram was in AutoCAD because you were using AutoCAD or something similar before you started using Revit. So you can, you know, you might still do your drafting in there. And that's not the best place because then you're, you know, switching between programs. You have to figure out how to get AutoCAD drawings loaded up into Revit. That never works as well as you want it to. It's a completely different space. So you want to get it outside of AutoCAD and actually into Revit. So then once you're in Revit, you have different places where you can put it in here. Uh, this here uh, model is the sample project that Autodesk ships with Revit. And the, uh, the default view that they have is kind of the side view of the building with uh, some of the panels laid out. I think they have this as the default view to kind of suggest, well, maybe you could do a single line diagram just as a, a, a section, as an elevation. And if you've ever tried to do that, it very quickly doesn't work. Uh, it, it's kind of a, it's a, a neat idea, but it, it's almost a little too cute that 
this project, they only show maybe half the panels. So there's another you know, 20 panels that aren't even shown that they didn't even bother to put in. Uh, they showed you know, some of the feeders, but apparently they even got tired of drafting them because it's tedious to do. So they don't show all of the feeders. Uh, so doing it in a section view uh, isn't really gonna actually work because you have panels on top of each other. The reason you do a single line diagram is because you want a diagram, you don't actually want an elevation. Uh, that's not the an appropriate way to try and model this. Uh, the next place that uh, people will sometimes try and get some integration going is that they will uh, take their floor plan and they'll kind of go off in space and they'll start building out a one line over here. Uh, and I've just got a very small one put together. But the, the benefit that people are trying to use here is that you can actually have labels so that that label here is actually matched up with this piece of equipment over here. Uh, so that when you make a change to this label, it's actually going to update what's happening in your single line diagram. Uh, that does get you some linkages happening and it, it does help a little bit, but you have problems if you come over here to this panel and we have to move it, say it needs to be on the other wall. I move that panel to be on the other wall and suddenly my label's not in the right place anymore. So every time you make a change in your model, you have to go back and redo a bunch of work in your single line diagram just to get it to look the same as how it was before. Uh, and you also have your single line diagram kind of floating off in space in the middle of a floor plan, which is a really kind of a weird spot in terms of Revit to have it be. So it's not really where Revit thinks about uh, diagrams like this existing. What you uh, want to get to, and uh, the going to be the most effective place is to actually have a separate drafting view in Revit where you are doing your single line diagram. Uh, but that's really where you want to be doing it. Because this way you're, you're using Revit as it's intended. You have the drafting section that's four diagrams and things like this. Uh, you're not trying to put it in a weird spot on a floor plan. And you have a little bit uh, better control over what's happening with the graphics. Uh, you can then start to use some of those Revit uh, components that we were talking about to get the graphics looking right. You can make your families, so you can have detail families. You can uh, add some intelligence to them so you can resize them as appropriate. You can uh, you just, you, you have all of the, the, the power of Revit and it's drafting available so that you can make adjustments to how the, the drafting looks. Uh, when you're in your drafting view, you then want to have uh, within your company, consistent graphics. Uh, when you put in a panel, when you put in a transformer, you don't want to have that look different uh, between your different projects. You know, I talked to, like I said, 600 engineers, but if I talked to 10 engineers, I would get like 15 different single line diagram uh, graphics uh, options back in terms of what they would do. And you don't want to have two or three within your company. Within your company, at least, you should have a single standardized set of graphics that you're using. So you want to have a good library of families that people can draw from, that when they're putting in a panel, they can go to your family location, they can pull a panel and they can put it in without having to think about what that panel is going to look like. And they can put in a transformer. And so they're not thinking about the, the Revit pieces. OK, I need a family. And what family am I going to use? that they know what they're gonna use and they can be thinking about their electrical design, working at a higher level. Okay, I've got a panel, I've got a transformer and these are the voltages I need. Maybe I can think about my sizing uh, rather than thinking about the mechanics of drafting in Revit. So you wanna have consistent graphics that you can share across your company. You also wanna have uh, the single line diagram be consistent with your model. Uh, when you make changes to one place or the other, you really want to have those changes happening in both locations. Uh, we were, this is the LP1 panel we were just looking at. If we change that panel name, we want to have it change in both places. So if we go take a look at this panel here and we want to change its uh, panel name, you want to have some sort of system so that if you change the name, say the architect doesn't like dashes, he wants it just to be LP dash, LP1, uh, that we can change that here and it's gonna update on our model. So we've got the new panel being lit, uh, name here. And then over in the single line diagram, you also have LP1 being listed there. So you wanna have consistency within your model so that changes in your model and in your single line diagram uh, are, are happening at the same time. 
Then the final side of the electrical design triangle are the calculations. So this is where you're really doing all of your electrical work, uh, you know, earning your keep as an electrical engineer, sizing your wires, uh, you know, doing the short circuit analysis, setting AIC ratings, all that stuff that you have to do to, to have a, an appropriate electrical design. And we really like to think that we have a single, nice, unified electrical model where everything's happening uh, and it's just one clear cut space. But the reality is it's usually a little bit messier than just a single model. You've got some stuff in Revit. You've got loads happening in Revit. You probably are, are displaying your panel schedules in Revit, uh, connecting devices in Revit. So Revit has some stuff happening in it, but Revit can't do everything. So maybe you step out to an Excel spreadsheet and you're doing some of your feeder sizing there. Maybe you do have an Excel spreadsheet for your short circuit analysis. Uh, and the, the reality is you probably don't have one Excel spreadsheet. You know, you've got three or four Excel spreadsheets happening. Uh, so, you know, as it starts to get messy, you got lots of different Excel spreadsheets happening. Maybe you're using some of Mike Holt's tools that you've got some of his web calculators that you uh, include for your calculations. So you've got uh, other tools like that. Uh, and maybe you're not doing it in Excel. Maybe you're using something like SKM or ETAP or Easy Power, one of those other third-party tools, something, one of those calculation modules for, for doing all these calcs that you've got that where, you know, you have to do your design, get everything set up in there. So now that's another place you could be doing your calculations. And then there's probably uh, the lighting calculations that you need to do, either Elam tools, if you're doing it within Revit itself, maybe you're stepping out and you're doing it in visual. So you've got all of these different calculations happening. Uh, and so with the electrical design triangle, you've got these three sides. And what you really want to do is get it so that when you make a change in one place, it's happening in the others. So that, like I said, if we change a side, a panel name in the Revit model, that that goes over to the single line diagram and updates the single line diagram. Or if you're in the single line diagram and change a panel name, that impacts what's going on in the Revit model. In the same way, if you change that panel name or make an adjustment, you want that change going over to the calculations. If you resize a wire in your calculations, you want that to show up in your single line diagram. And for completeness, the calculations in the Revit model should be talking as well, that if you're uh, adjusting a panel size in your calculations, what, how that's being displayed on, say, your panel schedule in Revit should be updated as well. So you want to get these three sides all talking to each other. And you can use the electrical design triangle to analyze really how you are doing all of your design work in, in addition to your single line diagram. So uh, as an example, let's consider uh, putting a meter into your single line diagram. So we've got our electrical design triangle, we've got the single line diagram, we've got the calculations, and we've got the Revit model. And so we need to insert a meter. So you're gonna do some drafting over here in your single line diagram. So there's gonna be some drafting components happening in your, in your detail view. Uh, and then on the calculation and the Revit model sides, you're probably not actually doing anything. So you don't really model all of your uh, meters in your Revit model and it doesn't really impact the calculations at all. So something like a meter is pretty straightforward. It's just some drafting on the single line diagram. Uh, but say you wanna do something like a bus gutter. So again, you've got the single line diagram, the calculations and the Revit model. And say you wanna do a bus gutter. So now you have to think about how that's gonna be handled in each of those different uh, sides of the triangle. So over in your single line diagram, you're probably going to draw it. So you've got some drafting, you've got your connections, and then maybe you're drawing out to a panel. So you've got drafting happening to represent the bus gutter in the single line diagram. And then over in Revit, you know, if this is like the, the side view of the section view of our building, you probably have a first piece that's the electrical model. Uh, and that you have on the first floor, and maybe you have other little pieces that you are actually connecting, and then you're connecting out to your panels. So you have to model it in Revit, have to get those pieces in there, get everything connected up properly. And then you, again, have to Revit uh, model it in your calculations. So you've got your bus gutter, and then you've got panel one, you've got panel two, so that you can do your wire sizing back to the bus gutter, so you can do your voltage drop analysis, so that uh, you, just all those calculations happen. 
So you have to create it in all three of those places. Uh, so when you're when you're creating your bus schedule, you have to make sure that it's properly modeled and being shown in all three of those. Uh, and as another example, uh, say you need to upsize a wire for a voltage drop. So we've got the single line diagram again, the calculations, and the Revit model. So we are over here in the calculations. And we find that uh, we need to increase a wire size. Uh, try that again, wire size. When you increase that wire size, you need to push that over to the single line diagram to have the new wire size here as well. And if you're showing that wire size in your Revit model, say you've got it on your uh, panel schedule or it's being shown as a home run, you need to increase that wire size over here as well. So you need to have that information from the calculation being pushed out to the single line diagrams and the Revit model. So when you're thinking about your single line diagram, uh, for the you have the drafting that's happening in Revit, but where you really can take it to the next level and be effective is that when you're linking that single line diagram to your calculations and to your Revit model so that things are happening, uh, happening in one place and automatically being updated in other places. And there are various ways you can do that. Uh, one, you can just make sure that you have good manual checklists for making sure that the information gets changed. If you change a panel name, that you know you have to go back and check it in these other places. So you can put together checklists uh, and, and back checking tools so that you can have a manual process to make sure that, that when you make a change, that it, that gets propagated everywhere else. Uh, and that can work and you can make that, uh, that workflow be efficient and, and you just have to make sure that you're, you're handling all of that. You can also try and automate some of this. You could use uh, Dynamo or some of the other scripting that Revit has to try and pull information from your Revit model to your single line diagram. Uh, some of the calculation tools can push into Revit. So you could use those to push the information into Revit as well. Uh, some companies that uh, I've talked with they actually have uh, developers on staff to handle a lot of this automation where they're actually writing a bunch of in-house uh, routines to move things between these three different sides of the electrical triangle within their firm using their standards. Uh, so that's another way you can approach it is you can actually add staff to, to handle the, the automation of Revit. Uh, so that's, that's, that's the, the framework we have and how how my customers, my best customers are thinking about how to do their work in Revit. Um, and obviously you can do all of this yourself, but uh, we also have a tool that uh, if you'd like to know about, I can show you that it can help link all these sides together. So if you'd like to see a little bit more about a tool we have that uh, links these three sides together, just go ahead and type uh, yes in the chat for me again. And I can talk a little bit more about a tool that we have that can uh, link these pieces together. And I've got a number of customers who are using this tool. We built this tool specifically to take these three sides and get them working together. Uh, I've got an engineer uh, uh, out in California where a couple of you are, all are from. Uh, he says it cuts the number of steps in his workflow in half by using it. Uh, another engineer out in Washington, he says mechanical revisions went down from a week to two to four hours. So it's a 90% reduction in effort. Uh, and so the, uh, tool that we have. It's an add-on for Revit. It's called Design Master Electrical RT. And so we put this tool together to take these three sides of the electrical design triangle and actually do that linking for you. So rather than using a manual process or having to build something else out on your own, you can just plug this into your current workflow and, and start reaping the benefits of having these three sides uh, linked together. So on the Revit model, you're still doing all your Revit, des your design in Revit. You're doing your panels and transformers, your light fixtures, uh, your circuiting, your panel schedules, all still happens in Revit. So that doesn't change at all. Our software does take over the breaker sizing and the wire sizing from Revit because Revit didn't do a great job on those. So uh, we handle that on the calculation side. So we kind of take, take that over. For the single line diagram, we have a nice drafting view that has, is detail items that are linked to your model families. So that the software knows that when you make a change to one or the other, it should update the other place. 
So it knows that your single line diagram and your Revit model are actually the same thing. And then we put the calculations in there as well so that you're not having to redo your entire Revit model in another calculation package to get your, your calcs out. So we do the breaker sizing and the wire sizing. Uh, we can then do voltage drop, short circuit analysis, arc flash, selective coordination, all those calculations that you need for a standard commercial building. So I'll go ahead and uh, show you a little bit about how that actually works. I'll pull up Revit here. Uh, you know, one of the examples we were looking at was our voltage drop, where you need to upsize a wire for voltage drop. So here we have a schedule that's showing our voltage drop uh, along the feeders. And we've got this panel that's over 3% voltage drop. We actually need to go to the panel upstream and adjust this feeder size. So we can use our tool to adjust the feeder size go from a 250 mil to a 350 KC mil uh, feeder. Uh, and so when we're doing that, we're gonna reduce our voltage drop. And then we need to update the calculations so that we get the new voltage drop on the panel downstream of it. And we also need to update that wire size on the single line diagram so that it's showing this new wire size so that new that feeder is being properly uh, represented there. Uh, and then if it, that feeder was being shown anywhere else, it would also be updated. So now we've got 2.77% voltage drop. So we are under the 3%. And if we go over to the single line diagram, that is this panel here. It now has the 300 amp feeder being displayed there. That's uh, it's linked over to this uh, feeder schedule over here, showing you the actual size on that feeder. So we made the change. We got our calculations updated. And then the single line diagram is updating as well. Uh, we were also talking about having a consistent model where when you change names in one place uh, or sizes, you wanna have that be reflected both in the model and in the single line diagram. So again, if I come here and I wanna change some of these panel names, we can change it uh, through our interface here. So I can take this EP2, I can get rid of the dash again, and maybe we want to change the size of that panel because it's actually got 200 amps of load on it. So let's upsize that to a 225 amp panel. Uh, and then when we uh, get out, we'll see that uh, that was actually the wrong panel size I've been shown here. Uh, let's choose one of these other panels. Let's take uh, EP1B. We'll change that panel name. Get rid of the dash from that one. Uh, it doesn't have any load, so it maybe only needs to be 60 amps. So we've changed the, the name changed here automatically. The panel size, it's now a 60 amp panel. And if we go take a look at this panel uh, on the uh, single line diagram, the name's been updated, the panel size has been updated. You can see this other panel, that name was updated and it was upside. Uh, the panel size was uh, changed to 225, so that happened automatically. It's also linked to the feeder, so we have a 225 amp feeder and then a 225 amp breaker. And then if we go to the panel schedule, if we go to PP2B where it's being fed from, you'll see that it also has uh, that 225 amp uh, panel uh, breaker is reflected here as well. So we made one change to just the panel size. And that was reflected everywhere it needed to be, uh, to be adjusted for the feeder size, the breaker size on the single line diagram in the panel schedule. And then the voltage drop and the short circuit analysis are gonna now use that new feeder size for their calculations. So you make a change in one place and it happens in all three different places for you. So that is uh, how the, uh, our, our add-in is working. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to take those three sides of the electrical design triangle and, and link them together for you. Uh, obviously you can manage it yourself. You can do it with manual processes. You can you know, write your own customization or you can take a program like ours and, and use it to enhance your workflow. Uh, so if you're interested in learning more, 
Um, I should say that the software is available for $600 per person per year. So that's the, the cost that we're, the price of the software. Uh, and there's really two next steps that you could take. One uh, is if you wanna take a look at your workflow and you wanna sit down with me and talk about what you're doing in Revit, what our software does and see if there's a fit or not, we can schedule a workflow review. Uh, and for that, I'll put a link into the chat. So you can click on that link. That will take you to this page here and you can schedule a time on my calendar. We can sit down and talk about what you're doing in Revit and see if it's gonna be a match with what uh, our software can do. And so I'd be happy to walk through it with you, see what you're doing uh, and, and see if there's any sort of match. You also could just download a free trial and start trying it on your own. Uh, you can just give it a shot. We've got nice tutorials that'll walk you through it. If you do have questions, you can always contact us and we're happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, and if you want to download a free trial, you can just go to this web page here. And that will take you to this page. You can download the trial, install it in Revit, and give the software a shot, go through our tutorials, see how it's going to work, uh, start evaluating it in terms of your workflow uh, in our software and see where there's going to be a match or not. If you do go with the free trial and you want to ask questions later, you can always come back uh, and schedule a time to, to talk about it. So I'd be happy to, to talk about it with you at any point. Uh, you can also just contact us directly with any tech support questions as you're going through the software. So if you want to learn more and take time to, uh, to talk it over with me, you can schedule the workflow review. If you just want to try the software out, you can download the free trial. Uh, now I do want to open it up to any questions. If you have any questions about how the software works uh, or about the framework, I'd be happy to answer those. So you can go ahead and just put those in the chat. either to me or directly to me or for everyone. Uh, there's one question here. Does it require special families to work? Uh, no, it doesn't require special families. So we work with the families that you're already using. We realize that you're using Revit. You've got your, your families already put together. You've got your panels and whatnot. So our software layers on top of what you're already using. So you don't need to uh, add any families. You can just use exactly what you have in our software. We'll work with it without any problems. Question, how much is it for more than one person? So the, the pricing, um, there's obviously varying levels of pricing depending on what you're looking at. Uh, for less than about 15 people, it's $600 per person. So each additional person is an extra $600. And then we've got some quantity discounts uh, for five and 10 license bundles, essentially. If you have more than 15 people, we have some floating licenses available where you have a, a, a pool of licenses of it, uh, that, that everyone shares. So you don't have se uh, separate licenses. Um, so, but that's uh, for 15 or more people, it's about $7,500 to start for that. Uh, another question, my firm uses a network license. Does that create a problem? That does not create a problem. So uh, in terms of our licensing, you can have it uh, per person or a shared network license. So we have both options available. Uh, and as long as you have a copy of Revit on your computer that you can use, our software will work with it. Uh, and then there's also kind of a, a follow-up potential question um, is if you're using BIM 360, if you actually have your stuff on the cloud, is that going to be an issue? And the answer to that is no. Uh, our software works with BIM 360 without any problems. Uh, so we're just using Revit's kind of built-in functionality for that. Our software works with what Revit's doing. So there's really no workflow changes there. Uh, another question, uh, is the price per year? So yeah, this is a subscription. Uh, so it's 600 per person per year. Uh, so that gets you access to all the support that you need. So if you have questions, you call us. Uh, and as we add upgrades, we'll release those and those will be available to you. At the very least, you'll get new versions of our software that works in the new version of Revit every year when it comes out. And then as we add new features, which we're constantly doing, you'll get access to those as well. Uh, question uh, on the shared license, is that the same price? Uh, the, um, since you guys have a bunch of pricing questions, if you do want to get full details on those, if you go to designmastery.biz, uh, under pricing, electrical for Revit has our complete pricing details. 
Um, so the floating license, which is being asked about, that's where you've got a, a pool of licenses that are shared between multiple people. Those are 1500 per license with a minimum purchase of five. So that's 7,500 for the year. So that's where you need like 15 or more people for that really to make sense. And then just to complete the little grid we have here, we also have the permanent license where if you don't want to renew every year, you can just purchase it and just have the, the software as is. You get a year of support and upgrades, but then after that, uh, those stop. So that's available. Generally, we encourage subscription because you're probably on subscription with Revit and you want to have our software up to date with what you're doing in Revit so that you, know, you can use our software on your newer projects. Uh, another question, can you demonstrate the other analysis tools, coordination and arc flash? Uh, and does it layer on our existing families via shared parameters that the software provides or we map and create ourselves? I'll answer the, the second question. So the software layers on your existing stuff. So we, the software essentially adds its shared parameters automatically. Uh, so all of our output, we are doing as shared parameters in Revit so that we can take advantage of everything Revit does with shared parameters. So if you take a look at say this panel and you look at in the properties, all of our shared parameters are down here at the bottom. So all of the information that we're outputting is a shared parameter that, that we load up automatically. So the panel name and the wire size and all the stuff that you wanna do any sort of documentation on. And so once it's a shared parameter, you can put it in the schedule, you can add it to your panel schedule wherever it needs to be. Uh, and then you wanted to see the coordination and the arc flash. So if I go here and take a panel, I need to get my panels loaded, there we go. I'm gonna take this panel here. Uh, we can assign breaker curves using the software. So this is, we use these for your selective coordination and also your arc flash for your trip times. So this is a hundred amp uh, breaker. We have a list of breakers included. We haven't been doing this quite as long as SKM has. So they have a slightly larger list of breakers at this point. Uh, we are expanding this. So if there's ever a breaker that you need that we don't have, contact us and we'll add it. Uh, so that, that's the process. And that usually takes a couple of days assuming we have access to the trip curve. Uh, but we've got a pretty extensive list that has been built out for customers based upon what they're using. So you specify the breaker and then your settings. So we'll do that for MDP and then for our LP1, I'll specify a breaker as well. So different, so we got two breakers in there. And then on your drafting view, you can insert a coordination graph uh, for those two panels and the, for their breakers. And it will put the two uh, breaker curves in there for you and label them. And then at this point, you can adjust them as necessary. Uh, so if you come in here and you want to adjust this curve, you can set new settings and it will redraw that curve for you. Uh, and then we are using these breaker curves to calculate trip times. So if you're doing arc flash, uh, we have uh, some additional settings that you specify down at the bottom. This is all the arc flash information. If you're familiar with arc flash, you'll, you'll be familiar with this. Uh, you have to give us a little few more pieces of information that's not defined by Revit. Uh, and then we use that and the short circuit analysis and the, uh, to figure out your arcing current. And then we use that to figure out your arcing time, uh, which eventually gives you your, your uh, incident energy. So those uh, breaker curves, uh, feed into this for your arcing times. Uh, and then we can either display that. It's all dumped out again as shared parameters. So you can, we have a schedule that shows all the arc flash values. And then we can also generate stickers that you could uh, provide for the panels if you actually need to provide those. We have a couple different formats for the stickers. Um, kind of the default option is just uh, they, they print four to a eight and a half by 11 sheet. So you could run a piece of sticker paper through your printer and you can print them out. 
So that's the simplest way. But then if you have uh, label makers or whatnot, we can work with you to get those formatted properly with our software. So again, uh, if you want to learn more, um, you can uh, schedule that workflow review with me. And uh, that link, again, I'll put back in the uh, chat. And if you just want to download the software and do a free trial, yeah, and uh, for all of you who've been here, uh, you're very welcome. If you're going to, uh, if you need to move on to something else, uh, thanks for stopping in. I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, if you want to schedule that workflow review or try the software out, definitely do that. If you have questions, contact us and we can help you out. Um, there's some questions here that didn't get answered. Uh, so let me go back and get the rest of those. Uh, let's see, there's a question. Does the software offer families? We do not offer families for the plan view. So all of your, your families for modeling your devices, we assume that you have your own stuff for that. So we don't offer anything there. So you use all your existing families. We have some ability to modify them to make them work a little better with our software. But in general, you're using your families in the model that you already exist. In the single line diagram, we do provide families out of the box for your, your graphics. And again, I don't know what your single line diagram looks like, but I do know it doesn't look like this. Uh, so these are customizable. You can either use ours as it is if you're not fussy, uh, or you can come in and you can make adjustments to them. And we've got a couple different options that exist. Um, so we can we, we have additional graphics other than what's shown here. Uh, and then you can modify these. These are standard Revit families. So if you run the edit family command, you can open it up and make changes here to, to make this look different. So we can adjust these. Um, so and then again, we have different uh, graphics. If you don't like the hexagon, we could choose something else. We've got an oval and a rectangle that are shipped with the software. So we could do a different shape for the feeder ID. Um, we've got some different formats for how the panels look, uh, things like that. So we have those, those panels are included. Uh, and then you can modify and customize and expand on that to make your, the graphics look as close to what you've got right now as possible. Question, can you place panel boards first and then create the single line diagram? Uh, and then kind of a similar question, does it automatically create it itself uh, using magic or does the software uh, include those drafting groups? So the way this actually works um, is that we can, I'm gonna get rid of that the graph there. You can do it two ways. If you already have your panels in your project, so you've laid them out uh, in your Revit project and you wanna start showing them on the single line diagram, you can run our link commands. So I can run insert link. I can select this panel here that's not inserted yet. Choose a graphic for it for the single line diagram. Uh, and it's gonna put it in there for us. So now we have this MDP3 panel that's connected to that panel. If we run highlight device, it'll show us here's where that panel existed in the model. So this already existed and we were just adding it to the single line diagram. We also can create uh, new panels. So if you do wanna create a panel that's not actually in your Revit model yet, we can create P new, you give it a level. So where it's gonna be inserted in the model, specify the voltage, choose your graphic for the one line diagram on the left and then the graphic that's gonna be used for the model on the right. And we can put that on the single line diagram. We can actually make the connection at this point as well. So this panel is being connected in Revit. Uh, and then we'll also draw the feeder. And then you can run highlight device and see that it put it here off in space. So it creates it for you in your Revit model because Revit really, really wants you to have a 3D representation of a panel for it to exist. So, okay, we put it off in space. This way you could lay out your single line diagram before you even have the model from the architect, kind of have stuff off in space. And then once you have an electrical room, start pushing stuff to where it belongs. So it exists here in the model, and then you can put it uh, where it belongs later. 
So we can do it both ways. You can create in Revit in the model first and then put it on the single line or create in the single line and have the, the Revit model created at the same time. And it is a manual process where you're, you're laying everything out. Uh, we don't automatically generate it for you yet. Um, people have been asking for that. So we are working on some functions where you could have everything laid out in Revit, press a button and it will generate the whole one line for you. Uh, that's something that's coming down the line when we talk about support and updates, that would be an update that you would get once we have that technology put together uh, or magic as uh, it was described in the question, uh, you would get access to that. So you would have that new feature. So as we come out with features like that, you get access to those because we realize that there's just so much more we can do with the software and that we want to do. So we're constantly improving it to making it uh, more effective for you. Another question is the conduit actually created in the Revit model? No. So the uh, actual Revit, the actual conduits are not being created. These are really just logical connections that happen in Revit. Revit doesn't really deal with the idea that the, <laughs> the wires between two panels actually have a physical representation that exists in the model. So Revit has conduits, but it doesn't really link that to this actual feeder between these two panels. So we haven't done anything to attempt to solve that problem. Uh, so we're just drawing the connection that exists in Revit, but we're not linking that to anything specific in the model right now. And again, uh, if you are interested in learning more, you can uh, schedule a workflow review with me. You can also download the free trial. Uh, it looks like a number of you have done that already. So as you're going through that free trial, if you have questions, contact us. Be happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, there's a lot to it because it is engineering software. Uh, so don't hesitate to contact us and we'll be happy to help you out. Does the software provide tabulated conduit sizing along with wire sizing, for example, for a feeder schedule? So we've got a couple options there depending on exactly what you're looking for. Uh, so when we insert feeders on the single line diagram, we generate this feeder schedule as well. Uh, and you'll notice actually has a, this 60 amp feeder isn't on the schedule. So if we update our schedule, it will update it. Or if you run the calculate, it would update as well. Uh, so this is where we link these IDs to the actual wire configurations. We have that. You can also uh, put together a schedule in uh, using um, just the standard Revit scheduling features uh, using the electrical systems to put together a, a Revit schedule that shows you all the different wire sizes used in your project. So we do have some, some different options for displaying that depending on how you want that to be displayed. Uh, so hopefully that answers your question kind of in a, a general terms, but uh, we do have ways to handle that. Any other questions on the software, how it works, how it can work with your workflow? Go ahead and put them in the chat. And again, if you wanna go over the software with me, you can schedule a workflow review there. You can also download the free trial here. Uh, and uh, so thank you for creating the software. You're very welcome. We hope that you find it helpful. Again, you know, the. The, the framework that we have of the electrical design triangle, you know, that's a, a, a serious problem in the industry. You've got these three different sides and you, you have to keep everything, uh, you know, you have to have them all integrated. So uh, we, we definitely wanted to provide a tool that can have, make it so that when you're making changes, you're not having to chase your tail all over the place, that you can make the change in one place, have it happen everywhere else. You can focus on your design work and not chasing down a panel name across three different places it's being shown. We do, uh, there's a question, will this we webinar be available to view later? Yes, we do record these and I will be sending a recording out automatically to everyone. So you'll get a copy of the, the webinar if you wanna review it. 
So if you want to see the webinar again, uh, or you want to share it with someone else in your company, uh, you'll, you'll get a link to that that you can share once that's available. So you can click on those links in the chat and schedule a workflow review, talk about what you're doing in Revit, or just download the trial and start uh, working on it on your own. And uh, that is what I have for you today. So uh, thank you for attending. I hope that this was helpful. Uh, if you have additional questions, uh, you can keep asking them. Otherwise, we can sign off for the day. Uh, let's see, Eric and Zachary, I think I got your questions answered. Christopher, I think I got your questions answered. Shahid, I don't know if you have any questions. If you have any questions, uh, this is your chance to ask them. Otherwise, thank you for attending, and I hope you all have a good day. It doesn't look like there's any more questions coming, so we will go ahead and sign off. Again, if you do have questions, contact us. Be happy to uh, talk about the software with you.